Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Deodat Maharaj, Executive Director, Caribbean Export, President Directors of the TTCSI, Chairman of Creative TT, Chairman of Music TT, other specially invited guests, members of the media, participants of the Business of Music Training Program 2021, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am Melissa Jimenez, General Manager of Music TT and the moderator for the opening ceremony of the Business of Music Training Program 2021. I would like to call upon Mr. Mark Edgehill, President of Trinidad and Tobago Coalition of Services Industries, TTCSI, and our partner on this program to welcome you all to this event this morning. Thank you, Mr. Edgehill. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Eileen Ovid, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Mr. Zay Alves Pereira, Charge Affairs, the European Union delegation to Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Deodat Maraj, Executive Director of Urban Export, officials of the Ministry of Trade and Industry, our collaborator, of course, the, uh, Music TT, directors of TTCSI, other specially invited guests, members of the media, participants of the Business of Music Program 2021, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I have the pleasure this morning of welcoming you all to the opening ceremony of the Business of Music Training Program 2021. Our research at TTCSI has revealed that the concept of a creative economy was first introduced by Business Week in August 2000. And while there are many schools of thought on the definition of the term, they all agree that creative industries have been responsible for many countries' economic resurgence and global competitiveness. An ideal example of this would be the United States of America, by far the world's leading creative economy with its artists and cultural production in, 20, in 2019, bringing in about 920 billion, which is 919.7 billion US dollars, which amounted to 4.3% of their gross domestic product. The arts contributed to the national economy that more than to the national economy than construction, transportation and warehousing, travel and tourism, mining, utilities, and ag agricultural industries. I would like to highlight some key statistics of the value of the creative sector to the economy of the United States, according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. There were 5.2 million arts and cultural sector jobs in America in 2017, accounting for 3.3% of all US jobs which collectively paid workers a total of 446.7 billion US dollars. Arts and cultural employment in the United States grew by 1.2% in 2019, despite what uh, we are about to face with COVID. Uh, artists are highly entrepreneurial. They are 3.6 times more likely than the total US workforce to be self-employed. Artists are highly educated. 63% of all artists aged 25 and older hold bachelor's degrees or higher levels of education as compared to just 36% of all workers in the labor force. More than half of the artists in the United States, approximately 58%, are employed in the private for profit sector. According to the World Economic Forum, the Future of Jobs Report 2018, Creativity, originality, and initiative is the number three in demand skill predicted for 2022, especially as the demand for manual skills and physical ability continues to decline. In addition, leading employees see creativity as a critical skill for the future workforce. 50% of opportunities in the job market cite creativity as a necessary skill, and 74% of educators say that the risk of job automation is lower in, in professions that require creative problem-solving skills. So without a doubt, the creative sector must be, put, must be a priority for our country. It is, a signif it is significant to point out that creative industries produce intellectual property in the form of patents, 
copyrights, trademarks, and proprietary design. Increasing levels of intellectual property sources in a, is a sign that the country is innovation driven and by extension, it positions the country into a higher classification of income growth. Gareth Murphy, writing in the Journal of Music in January 2021, noted that in September 2020, an incredible 400 million people were paid up to a subscription for stream music. That's almost 100 million more than in 2019. Estimates put today's music streaming market at over 20 billion. Add physical formats, licensing, publishing, merchandising, and other spin offs, and the original prognosis is holding. We're still heading into a boom. Even with COVID, the creative pumps of an energy growing, of an ever growing music ecosystem and pounding strong. If anything, lockdown is strengthening demand. Murphy further pointed out in May 2020, Goldman Sachs actually upgraded by 25% the previous projections of an imminent music boom. They now believe that three core sectors, live recordings and publishing, will double in size to 131 billion by 2030. They are just some of the global trends impacting the music industry. Hence the reasons why it is important for us to provide our artists with, and musicians with the tools to succeed globally. We cannot do this by ourselves. And this workshop is proof of the effectiveness and of cooperation, collaboration, and cohesiveness as it continues to sensitize and work, uh, they sensitize the work of the Economic Partnership Agreement undertaken by the Caribbean Export Development Agency under the 11th European Development Fund Regional Private Sector Development Program. This two-day workshop is designed to assist musicians in the creative and cultural industry sector to identify the opportunities to export their services. The workshop will fo focus on building the capacity of Trinidad and Tobago artists. The workshop will focus on various topics, which include maximizing branding and marketing, creating a unique value position and developing a competitive pricing strategy. I urge the participants to take full advantage of this training opportunity. Ask questions, contribute, constructive, to contribute to constructive discussions, network with your colleagues, and let this be the start of several billion dollar startups. I truly believe that the creative and cultural industries can be a vehicle for integration and economic transformation of Cariform on states. And I would like to thank the Ministry of Trade and Industry for her team, the, thank the Minister of Trade and Industry and her team for their continued support in our development of services in Trinidad and Tobago. I wanna thank you and wish you all very productive sessions throughout the day's activities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgehill. And please join me in welcoming the new Executive Director of Caribbean Export, Mr. Deodat Maharaj. Thank, thank you, moderator, uh, Mr. Zia Alves Pereira, Mark Edgehill, uh, members of the media, distinguished participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a most pleasant good morning. I must say that when I hear the voice of the moderator and Mark, I feel very much at home. And for those who would perhaps be listening to, to me now, I think you would notice a similarity in the accents of the previous speakers and my own. I happen to be from the beautiful land of Trinidad and Tobago as well. Um, Caribbean Export Development Agency, we are truly delighted to partner with Mark and Vashti and the entire team at the Trinidad and Tobago Coalition of Service Industries and Music Teach Trinidad and Tobago to deliver this business of music training program. Our Caribbean is known for its vibrant culture, which has been able to navigate into North America and European markets with music at the spearhead as a major pioneering force. However, our artists, make money and generate business only at certain times of the year. 
we really need to find ways to translate this recognition of our art form and the talent of our people to create jobs and opportunities in Trinidad and Tobago and across the Caribbean. Caribbean export in partnership with the European Union under the 11th European Development Fund is therefore committed to this and supporting the development of the music industry in Caribbean states. The European Union has been an enduring partner for our work and has had a vision uh, for many years about the importance of advancing private sector to generate jobs, growth and opportunity for Caribbean people and see private sector development as an essential part of our economic and development transformation. We see music and the entire services sector as key to the diversification of countries like Trinidad and Tobago and indeed the rest of the Caribbean. More specifically, I see non-tourism related services as the next frontier for Caribbean business. And that's the reason why we are so delighted to partner in this initiative. Let us for a brief moment, look at some data. The global music industry continues to grow year after year and is estimated to reach 131 billion US dollars by 2030. For artists to gain a piece of this, they need not only to be creative, but to understand the underlying business infrastructure to support them. Caribbean Export with the support of the EU has provided a suite of services in this regard, including this business of music training program. In essence, we are determined to support our membership in this sector so precious jobs and opportunities can be created for our people, people in Trinidad and Tobago and people across the Caribbean. Our vision is that our artists are not only performers, but business people. Participants, you would be generating jobs, foreign exchange and opportunity. The Business of Music Training Program offers emerging and established music practitioners opportunities to enhance their te technical capacity and understanding of how the modern music industry operates. The modular program is delivered in four phases, self-taught virtual training, face-to-face -face or virtual workshops, coaching and mentorship, and finally a music showcase to generate interest and support music distribution. The program is done in four phases. The first phase being a self-taught online program, which was done over a three week period by you, the participants. The second phase, this workshop allows persons to come together virtually to undertake further training, build important networks and partnerships and to reinforce some important subtopics such as intellectual property, digital marketing and distribution. The next two phases will involve the completion of export plans and participation in regional and international showcases and B2Bs. Initiatives such as these enhance technical capacity and provide the tools needed in addition to talent to capitalize from the digital music space. Coupled with helping to link with international music executives through live and virtual showcases, the opportunity for music creative has been unprecedented. While most Caribbean musicians use live performances as their main route to revenue generation, COVID has taught us the importance of leveraging technology and digital platforms to diversify the music industry. And we have seen this for the last carnival, including Trinidad and Tobago, where there were a number of virtual carnival events. So when we think about what has happened, carnival need not be an event in February in Trinidad and Tobago or a specific time across the Caribbean. We can package, commoditize and market our artists and our talent and our music 12 months for the year across the globe. The execution of this program will therefore not only promote Caribbean culture and music, but will also aid in creating new niche jobs and increasing exports of Caribbean music to international markets. Our interventions have been geared towards building capacity and showcasing our artists, both in the regional and international markets to increase exports of the wonderful Caribbean music. Showcasing our regional musicians remains a top priority of our agency. 
we have therefore supported and continue to support our artists in participation in Romex and with them and other international music showcases. As an agency, and this is an important point, I, uh, we believe in equal opportunity for all. In 2019, we provided support to a visually impaired musician from Trinidad and Tobago to identify the barriers faced by the visually impaired in the region, which hinders the ab ability to produce music. The mission sought solutions to develop and adjust musical instruments to become more accessible to the visually impaired. We further gain the commitment by top manufacturers of these instruments in the UK to assist in procuring specially modified instruments for visually impaired musicians. As your Caribbean Export Development Agency finalizes our strategic plan over the next three years, entitled Building Business, Transforming Lives for a Resilient Caribbean, Mark and Vashti and colleagues, you'd be pleased to hear the services sector will form a critical pillar as a next frontier for Caribbean business. In this regard, we will focus on sectors such as business and professional services, information and communication technology, education services, and of course, the creative sector. At Caribbean Export, we are committed to providing the necessary support to help build the capacity of regional music practitioners and actions such as this workshop, the business of music training, and the execution of showcases and B2Bs will contribute to the transformation of the sector and the lives of our artists in the sector as well. Thank you so very much. Mr. Maharaj, thank you so much for sharing your insights on the music industry, the need for programs like these and the role of Caribbean exports in developing this very, very critical sector. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with pleasure that I now call upon Mr. Zay Alves Pereira, Charge of Fair of the EU delegation to Trinidad and Tobago to deliver remarks. Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Good morning, and thank you for giving the European Union delegation to Trinidad and Tobago the opportunity to contribute to the opening of this workshop. The music industry is considered a vital element in safeguarding and promoting cultural diversity. Music is a universal language and also creative and cohesive power for both the individual and society. Like many others, I personally do not spend a single day of my life without music. And as for others, it rather tends to put me in a happy mood. So in short, the society role of the music industry is undeniable. The music industry has also great economic importance and the Caribbean music industry is no exception. Trimbagonian music has been exported not only to the Anglophone Caribbean countries and across the Atlantic in cities with diasporic populations, but also to those music lovers everywhere who appreciate its authentic quality and freshness. We shall not forget that Calypso Rose declared herself the Queen of France as she accepted the Victoire de la Musique Award for the World Music Album of the Year in Paris, France, 2017. It is because of this cultural and economic importance and its future growth potential that Caribbean export in partnership with the European Union has put the music industry among one of its priority sectors and major beneficiary of capacity building activities under our EU funded regional private sector development program. We believe that this support remains needed and critical. Indeed, under the digital shift and increased competition from global players, the music sector is in constant transformation. Over the past decade, there have been fundamental changes in the way music is created, produced, distributed, and monetized. This situation has created opportunities as well as challenges. For instance, the repartitioning of revenue and the fair remuneration of artists in this new digital environment, or the need to develop more digital and business skills for artists. Support is needed to help the sector and its branches to become more competitive in the global market 
and to address obstacles for the Caribbean musical offer and its numerous emerging talents to cross borders. In early 2020, the coronavirus crisis hit the sector particularly hard, leading to new challenges for the sustainability of the whole music ecosystem. Trinidad and Tobago has been no exception with the cancellation for the second time of its carnival, which I believe still qualifies as the largest festival in the region in terms of visitors and tourism expenditure. The two-day workshop you will now attend comes in conclusion to the online business of music training program undertaken by over 120 local artists. I have no doubt that this two-day workshop will capture your attention and creative energy and will also help equip you with the right tools to identify additional export opportunities within the Caribbean and beyond and give you wings to fly even further. I wish you a very fruitful way workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ferrero. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now welcome the permanent secretary, Eileen Allen Ovid of the Ministry of Trade and Industry to deliver the feature address on behalf of the Senator, the Honorable Paula Gopiskun, Minister of Trade and Industry. Yes. Thank you, Madam Moderator, Ms. Jimenez. Good morning, all. President of the Trinidad and Tobago Coalition of Services, Mr. Mark Edgehill, Mr. Deodat Maraj, Executive Director of CEDA, Mr. Zay Alves Pereira, Charge d'Affaires European Union Delegation to Trinidad and Tobago, Ms. Vashti Gaidin, Chief Executive Officer to Trinidad and Tobago Coalition Services Industries, facilitators of the workshop, stakeholders and participants, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my distinct pleasure this morning to address you on behalf of Minister Gopi School, who unavoidably was called away to other duty, and to address you at this opening ceremony of the Business of Music Workshop. First, I wish to commend Trinidad and Tobago Coalition of Services and the Caribbean Export Development Agency for hosting this workshop today, which is testament to the long-standing collaborative efforts of both agencies. This workshop is just one aspect of the numerous initiatives being offered by CEDA in collaboration with TTCSI to build capacity of music managers and artists in the region. And today's workshop will therefore provide participants with the tools required to succeed in the music business. Many of you will be aware that CARIFORA member states are working towards the implementation of a framework for exchanges in cultural activities goods and services, including the audiovisual and performing arts sector under the Economic Partnership Agreement with the European Union. It is expected that there will be increased access to information on key organizations within the EU that can provide technical and financial support to strengthen the regional industry. As I'm advised that one of the challenges by, identified by artists is the lack of access to finance. Therefore, the implementation of the protocol on cultural cooperation within the CARIFORUM EU EPA has the potential to ease the burden of accessing finance for music managers, artists, and other professionals in the country. At the level of the national government, Trinidad and Tobago's National Development Strategy 2016 to 2030, also known as Vision 2030, identifies several priority service sectors which are earmarked for growth and expansion through a robust agenda for building their export capability. And some of these sectors include tourism, including leisure, medical and health and wellness services, energy services, and creative industries and entertainment services. And I dare say that in the context of creative industries, Trinidad and Tobago's multi-ethnic population and amazing cultural diversity is a natural source of creative goods and services which encompasses our music, art, craft, designs, fashion, festivals, and food that we can offer to the world. Our creative industries therefore have significant potential to generate increased revenue and employment, earn foreign exchange, and create export opportunities in international markets and can also contribute to our economic diversification efforts. At the global level, the music industry is a billion dollar sector that has under, undergone a significant number of changes within recent years. And one of those changes 
is the advent of streaming services, which has impacted the revenues derived from recorded music. And as such, music professionals have adapted by finding ways to monetize music streaming. The International Federation of the Phonographic Industry in 2021 reported that global music sales grew for the sixth consecutive year in 2020, with total revenues rising by 7.4% to US 21.6 billion. Of this, streaming subscription revenues grew by 18.5%, accounting for US 9.9 .9 billion of overall music sales in 2020. In addition to this, the effects of the global COVID-19 pandemic and the restrictions placed on public gatherings have pushed artists to virtual concerts in order to keep audience engagement. These two factors of online streaming and the global COVID-19 pandemic have served to create seismic changes in the international music industry. Therefore, it is crucial for Trinidad and Tobago to recognize and capitalize on this new trend for the local industry to remain viable and at the same time to be able to provide a sustainable living for the many professionals therein. Added to this, our local agency, Music TT, conducted a music professional survey in 2017, in which it was identified that there was a need for music skills training in business capacity and market development, which would aid in helping the industry to become more sustainable. So today's workshop is geared towards addressing some of these training gaps in the music industry. This two-day workshop will be split into four segments, namely the business of music, metadata, which is one of the most important and complex parts of the music industry. As you all in the industry will be aware, metadata is the lifeblood of the industry because the information contained in those credits are required to be synchronized across all kinds of industry databases to ensure that whenever and wherever your song is played, you, the artist, would be identified and paid. There are also segments of digitization and publishing, which focuses on the role of technology and the internet. Music and IP, which will focus on the protection of IP rights. And there are also segments on developing an export plan and music marketing. This workshop will therefore provide participants with a broader knowledge base on how to unlock your economic potential and give you a better chance to build sustainable livelihoods from the music business. Therefore, when opportunity knocks on your door, you will be more equipped to take advantage of it. These selected, selected cut topics are fundamental to successful commercialization and will definitely cement the critical lessons learned over the two days. The economic potential of the music industry for all stakeholders is considerable and government seeks to ensure that the revenues earned by our creatives continue to grow. Therefore, in order to garner financial support from the private sector, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, through the Ministry of Finance, currently offers a corporate tax allowance of 12 million for the corporate sponsorship of nationals in the local fashion industry, audio, visual, and or video productions for the purpose of local education or local entertainment and local production companies in respect of their own productions. Global trends are also constantly monitored to keep abreast of the strategies required to modernize and monetize our local talent. In this vein, I am pleased to highlight the work done by Music TT through their capacity building programs, which aims to bolster businesses and drive sustainability of operations, profitability and exportability of the creative sector. One of the current flagship programs, Spotlight, launched in 2017 as the Artist Development Portfolio Program, annually provides a cohort of 10 artists on the verge of export readiness with customized training in areas such as music, business, entertainment law, brand development, stage presence, pitching strategies, developing business and marketing plans, developing an online presence and monetizing intellectual property. Similar to the outcome of CEDA's virtual regional songwriting and music production training workshop in 2020, which produced 23 tracks for virtual showcase aimed at international music executives. Music TT was able to produce an album of eight original tracks featuring artists from the Spotlight program. The album is now available across all major streaming platforms such as iTunes and Spotify for download. 
This and other programs implemented by Music TT will build and strengthen the music industry, providing the necessary support to guide our artists on the road to commercial viability. There are many opportunities available locally, regionally, and internationally. And I urge participants today to translate all of the training and knowledge gained from these programs into viable business opportunities that can contribute to the sustainable growth and diversification of our economy. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Thank you, P.S., for sharing the vision for the creative sector and the insights into the many different programs that are available for our creatives to tap into. So ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the opening ceremony. I thank you very much for joining us this morning. I know these participants are particularly eager to commence their training. So on this note, we will be handing over to Mr. Simon Batiste to begin the training session. Participants, enjoy. <laughs> 